Hey guys, welcome to um, the second installment of um, some questions for Ibi. So looking at the 2011 HSC general paper, um, looking at a few different um, or a bit of a variety of questions. So the first one, question eight, in which graph would the data have a correlation coefficient closest to negative 0.9? When we think of, um, of, of the correlation, let's think about y equals mx plus b. As you can see, we can sort of having a sort of straight line stuff. We want to see if there is a correlation. Um, if there is a correlation, for example, C is a positive correlation because um, it's going left to right, it's increasing, negative for D. Um, B we would call a nonlinear correlation, it looks like a, an upside down parabola. And A there would be no correlation. But in this case, we want a coefficient closest to negative 0.9. Well, the coefficient is what's in front of the X, and we know that to be called the gradient. So we're looking for the line that has a gradient that is close to negative 1. So in that case, D is the only, um, I guess, correlation there that has a negative correlation. So the answer there is D. The next one, question 20. A function um, center hosts events for up to 500 people. They cost C in dollars for the center to cost an event where X is given by... C is equal to 10,000 plus 50x. Basically, this is a, a similar question to the 2010 paper where we have two equations. We have the point of intersection, which is solving simultaneously um, as well. But the question says, how much greater is the income of the function center when 500 people attend an event? Well, quickly, 500 people is going to be 50,000 people. So it wants the difference or how much greater is income for 500 people as opposed to the break-even point. Well, the break-even point is that point there we spoke about, okay? The, the solving simultaneously where they both intersect or point of intersection. That point is 20,000. So if we subtract those from each other, we get an answer or a difference of $30,000. So in that case, it's going to be C as the answer. Question, um, or the third question is question 21. A train departs from town A at 3 p.m. to travel to town B. Its average speed for the journey is 90 kilometers, or and it arrives at 5 p.m. So it takes two hours at 90 kilometers per hour, which means it has gone the whole total difference distance of 180 kilometers. That's from town A to town B. A second train departs from town A and arrives at town B. So it leaves at 3.10 and arrives at 4.30, which means it's gone a total of 80 minutes or an hour and 20 minutes. Um, so it's travelled 180 kilometres in that time because it's the same distance from A to B that we worked out in the first part. So we need to figure out what the speed of the second train is going to be. So if we do 180 kilometres, we divide by 80 minutes, that gets us what one minute is going to be. We times that by 60 minutes, okay, we can get our answer of 135 kilometres per hour. Likewise, you may have said... Um, one hour and 20 minutes, okay, or one and 20 over 60, or one and one third, and done it that way, and said 180 divided by one and one third, okay, to get our same answer of 135. But 135 is our answer, so part A. Next question, part P, this is a year seven question here, particularly, but because it's been such a long time ago we often forget how to do these so it's looking at number patterns so it's asked first of all to draw the, the next figure the figure four in this pattern so we can see there we've got one now in the fourth figure we're going to have three so four on the bottom and then we're going to have little roos for each of those as you can see there Okay, um, three, how many sticks would be required for figure 100? Well, let's try to find the rule for that. We can see that here, that the special number rule, it's going up by three. So let's start the rule by saying 3n. Now n, or f in this case, I guess, represents the number of figures. So three times one for the first figure would give three, but we want five. So we're gonna add two to it. Because three times one is three, plus two is five. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8. So 
3, 3 is a 9, plus 2 is 11. So that works out. So for the second question there, okay, we're going to do 3 times 100, which is 300, plus 2 equals 302. Likewise, I can use the same rule, but is it possible to create a figure this pattern using exactly 543, 6, okay, except I'm going to go backwards. 543 is equal to 3n plus 2. And then we're going to say 543 minus 2 equals 541. You can actually even put that into equations mode to see what n is going to equal to. I can then say divide by 3, so 541 divided by 3, which equals n. So then if we do that, if it hopefully is an even number, then that's going to be able to work out. So 541 divided by 3, that is not a whole number. Therefore, if n equals, um, let's say, 180.333, so no. It is not possible because you would have 6 left over or you need like etc. Okay, that's a tough question because we haven't done that once for some time. Question 23 now. An amount of $5,000 invested at 10% per annum compounded six monthly. Okay, that's important there. 10% per annum means per year. If it's six monthly, that's twice a year, so we need to divide it by two. So 10% divided by two, which gives us our 5% per six months. So that's the column that we're looking for. We're looking um, for this to find at the end of three years. So it's twice a year, because it's six monthly, for three years, which means six there. So we're using 1.340. And I need to times that by our $5,000. That's because this is at so far compounded values of $1. So we want it for $5,000. So we type that into our calculator, and hopefully we do that correctly we get an answer of $6,700. Okay, but the key there, obviously, is to divide your percentage by two and making sure that our periods, instead of being the three years, we're doing three times two is six years. D, um, the first part's quite easy, but then it gets a bit more challenging. The tank holds 10,000 litres of fuel. What's the volume of the tank in cubic metres? Well, one cubic metre is 1,000 litres, so if we do 10,000, Divide it by 1,000, we simply get an answer of 10 meters cubed or 10 cubic meters. The next part's a bit more challenging. We need to know what the formula of an ellipse is. Okay, the area of an ellipse equals pi times AB, or pi times A times B, where A and B is the semi major, so in that case, the 7.5 meters, and the semi minor. Okay, which is halfway there, um, which is going to be half of 1.34, which is going to be 0 0.67. Okay, so and then to find the volume, we then times the area by the depth or how far back. So in this particular question, we're told what the volu um, volume is going to be. Now the volume is 10 meters cubed. The area is pi times 7.5 times 0 0.67 and then we know that we times it by the depth okay so if I want to find out what the depth is going to be um, or the length of the tank the opposite of times that whole amount is to divide by that whole amount pi times 7.5 times 0 0.67 that leaves me with D. I prefer to do that in one calculation so I'm not having to round my answer early. Um, or unless you do that to a whole pile of decimal places, that should be okay. But now I'm gonna, simply going to put it into my calculator as it reads from left to right to get the answer of D is equal to, Actually, it's one tick. Hopefully, you picked it up. I <laughs> just realized that. What's half of 1.5? It is 0 0.75. Sorry, mate. So, just change that to 0 0.75. It's going to change the answer a little bit. Okay, so we do that. So, so 10 divided by pi times 0 0.75 times 0 0.67 is going to equal to 6.3. 
um, three meters. It does say give to the nearest centimeter, so distance is equal to 633 centimeters. Okay, so again, what I did there, the second part, we found out what the um, area of my ellipse was, so pi times 0 0.75 times 0 0.67. We know that in order to find the volume, we need simply to need times it by the length or the depth. We know the answer is 10, so then I can either put in my graphics calculator left to right and then let's solve it to find what d is equal to, or I can simply say d divided by that whole part, which leaves our d or, or our, um, our length. Okay? Alright, a couple of questions to go, mate. Um, question C, I'll just put a few bits of information on here to start with. Um, we can see here um, for part A and part B, which you said, or part 1, part 2, you've got these answers. So what's the bearing of C from B? Um, knowing that this was uh, 121 degrees here, then those two angles are going to be co-interior, so they add to 180. So then I subtract that from 114, um, 114 to get 55 degrees. Find the distance AC. Okay, that's simply using the cosine rule. 6 squared plus 9 squared minus... Um, 2 times 6 times 9, um, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then that gives us 12.7 uh, kilometers, but you got that one right. So the last part says, what is the bearing of A from C? So if I draw my little bearing line, so it's A from C. So it's this blue line that we're looking for. So I'm looking for the angle all the way around into there. So we know that that part there is already 90, that is 90, okay. I can figure out that because this is 55 inside here, that this little bit inside here is also 55, so already I've got 180 plus 55 degrees, but I need to figure out what that angle in there is going to be, okay. So often the sine rule is going to be nice and easy for this, so sine theta over 6 is equal to sine 114 over 12.7, okay, opposite sides. So in order to do that, we are going to do sine 114 on our calculator. So sine 114 divided by 12.7. We're then going to times the answer by 6, as you can see there. Then do shift sine. And our answer to get approximately 25.6 degrees, okay, or 26 degrees, I guess, to the nearest degree. Um, so it says to the nearest degree, so 30 equals 26 degrees. Now that gets us a little bit inside there, so let's add the 26 degrees here. So let's add the 26 to the 55 and to the 180 degrees which we get 261 degrees thereabouts or 206 degrees depending on how you round it up okay second last question um, you said it was part three that you're concerned about so I've already put the values in for part one and two and um, just to recap what is the value of the excellent table well it's two plus three is five um, what's probability of getting a school less than four or one two three four five six numbers are less than four out of 12 makes a half. So on spinner B, a 2 is obtained. What is the probability of obtaining a score of 3? Well, okay, so on my spinner B, I've already got a 2. So if I want to make a 3, the only combination I can do with my spinner A is getting a 2 and a 1, or another 2 and a 1, which is 2 possibilities out of 3 possibilities. So I could also get a 2 and a 3, but that obviously wouldn't make 3. So I've got 3 possibilities, so it's 2 and 3 chances. And my very last question for the 2011 paper, which is a very long question. Thanks, Ibi. Um, find the gradient of the line shown in the graph. Okay, gradient we know is change in y over change in x. The preferral method or rise over run. Rise over run, run we can also do is just say, I guess it's 60,000. If my rise and my run is 15, and you can see it's a negative graph. So negative. 60,000 over 15 and then we'll put that into our calculator to get minus 3,000 no sorry minus 4,000 looking at that there okay 
So again, the answer is going to be negative 4,000. Okay, so part two. Remember, make sure you have your sign because it's going left to right, it's going downwards. Okay, that's a negative 4,000. Um, all right, what does the value of the gradient represent in this situation? Okay, so the gradient, often which we say is the rate of change. So in this case, it's our rate of depreciation. So it's that constant rate that I'm losing value each year, or the value of depreciation. Um, three, write down the equation of the line shown in the graph. Okay, well, let's do y equals mx plus b. Okay, we can use, if we want, um, the letters here that we've got here, so maybe t and s for salvage value. Um, unless they um, actually so it's it's s and n so s is equal to now the gradient we know is negative 4000 and then our x value is years so it's n that's what it tells us in the question plus um, b so in this case it's plus 60,000 we can write that straight away because the B is a y-intercept, which we can clearly see 60,000. If we didn't have that, we could put in a coordinate for x and y and then let it solve, but we have it nice and clear there. You could also write it, I guess, as s is equal to 60,000 minus 4,000 n. That would be the same thing, but either one of those two would, would be okay. All right, um, question four, or part four. Find all the values of n that are not suitable for Norman to use when calculating the salvage value um, for the tractor. Well, first of all, looking for our n values, which is our x-axis, anything below zero, so n is less than zero, wouldn't make sense because we can't have negative years. Okay, we can't have negative time. And also, this point onwards would be pretty useless and is greater than 15 because the value is zero. Okay, the value would be zero, so it would or it would be be worthless. In other words, using our straight line depreciation. Pat used a declining balance. Now remember, this is straight line depreciation. Okay, which is kind of like simple interest because it's constant. But um, declining balance is kind of like our, uh, let's say, our combat interest. So it's VO1 minus R to the power of N. So each year you might get a little bit less and less and less and less losing interest. So um, what did Pat calculate the salvage value of his tractor to be after 14 years? So my salvage value is equal to the tractor was worth $60,000 to start off with. That was in the question. 1 minus my rate is 20% per annum, so 0 0.20, and it's the power of 14 years. So simply putting into our straight line depreciation formula, and then it's a matter of simply putting it into our calculator as it reads left to right. There's no need to put it into equations mode, but you can if you would like to. But if I put that into my calculator, we should get approximately. Um, $2,638.83. Um, using Pat's method of depreciation, describe what happens to the salvage value of her tractor for all values of grain greater than 15. Well, if you're thinking about the, uh, the declining balance, it's like a curved line, and what you'll find that because you're, uh, I guess you're finding percentage of an amount for each year, that every time you find a percentage of a percentage of a percentage of a percentage that the amount will get closer to zero okay so the amount will get close to zero however theoretically it will not reach zero it might get to like 0 0.00004 cents which is obviously for our purposes at equals zero, but in theoretically, it will never actually reach zero. It will get closer and closer and closer and closer to zero, but never actually touches it. Okay, so that's the questions that you give me for 2011.
I'll have a look at the other couple of questions um, and I'll post those when I get back from uh, from the snow. Hope uh, these were useful.